Well, it is now mid-August and it's about three weeks until I leave for Reno. And uh, as you saw in the last video, I intend to take this thing with me for display and it's not, in my opinion, in displayable condition. So I would really like it to be in a little bit better shape, at least, you know, primered one color. And uh, I have a couple of things that I'd like to do that I think would look really cool, but I don't know if it's gonna work out. So uh, we'll see how that works. But at any rate, um, we're kind of under the time crunch. I, like, like I said, I got three weeks, um, not full weekends to get this thing done. So uh, what I'm working on now is the cowling where we left off. So let me turn the camera around, I'll show you where I'm at and I'll show you what my plan is. So what we did last time is I, I made a little joggle um, in here and seamed the cowling together. So that's done, um, I've popped it apart. You can see I've got a couple Clecos in there to hold it together. Let me see if I can flip it here so you can sort of see inside. Sorry, one-handed working here. again that's where the seam um, is holding it together and again no seam up there because that's gonna all get cut out so I'm um, just trying to hold together for basic shape so what I'm doing now is I've got these sawhorses set up and um, I've got the laser actually it just shut off because it does that if you don't take care of it let me turn it back on maybe I can zoom in and you can see but what it's telling me is that I have the fuselage level so again the level datum is the bottom of the canopy rail. So fuselage is level. I'm gonna get the cowling fixtured up on there and then begin the process of uh, fixturing it in place semi-permanently so that I can bond in the inner lip, the fuselage to the cowl. So let's get going on that. All right, I used my angle die grinder with a roll lock disc on it and that made quick work of that little lip there. So you can see I've got that beveled nicely, that's all I really need. I just didn't want, you know, a 90 degree step there. Get a better shot at it. So that all looks good. So I've got it all cleaned up in there and uh, I'm ready for the layup. Okay, I have the joggle tape in and a coat of wax on that. And you can see I've got my micro and resin in there, filling the gap and then just a little bit of neat resin uh, brushed in just to help adhesion there. Since this won't be under vacuum, I like just a little bit of extra resin to help it grab and stick. It's always fine, but uh, good enough. So I've got the carbon strips laid up um, or wet out, I should say, between glass and I'm gonna start throwing them in there. Look at the bottom side all fixtured in place and I removed the top and as you can see I've used a combination of tongue depressors and um, actually door jam shims because they're tapered it, it actually made it really easy to kind of get the thing shimmed completely level so it's hot glued in place here the pool noodle there into the to the uh, sawhorse there and then if we look on the inside you can see that the gap is not horrible there's a little bit of a gap here it's real tight along the bottom and a little bit wider over there, but that's what it took to get it straight. And I guess truth be told, um, I've had the cowl on and off of here four times, you know, completely fixtured up like this and I didn't like it. So I took it off and redid it. I'm being a little picky, but that's because this is pretty important that I want this um, made it up there just perfect. So I'm gonna have a little bit of extra work to fill that gap, but yeah, that's really no big deal. I can get uh, most of it filled initially when I put in mixture of uh, resin and cabo in there before the carbon goes down so you can sort of see there um, the biggest challenge actually was getting it completely straight this way so I've taken the laser down now but I use the laser to get that all nice and straight so it's all good um, next step is I cut into the honeycomb here a little bit and extends around there that's I did it to square off the fuselage because as I mentioned before my trim lines in the plug weren't exactly straight so I took a little time and did that. So I'm gonna sand that back and then I'll get the inside of the lip of the bottom of the fuselage there all ready to go. I'll put my 20 mil tape down here and then I'll start with um, cab on resin in there and then probably four layers of glass here because I do expect to put nut plates here and I want that relatively stiff. So that's the plan, keep going. 
right, top lip is done. I didn't film too much of that. That stuff's kind of boring. Um, but I do have the top cowl mounted and I have had the bottom cowl mounted and the body work is basically done. So I've just got some of these um, tech screws in here. These are just temporary to hold it in place. So again, I'm getting this ready to take to Reno and I just want to display it kind of all in one piece. So that's my goal here. Um, as far as the body work goes, obviously it didn't need a whole lot. Uh, just basically a little bit around the edge here just to make that fair in real nice. And this is, you know, this is completely flush. Now when I come back and get ready to paint it, um, I'm gonna primer and block the whole thing straight. So it's pretty straight right now. There's no, you know, dents or anything like that or low spots, but um, I want show car finish. So the whole thing is gonna get blocked completely straight. Uh, take all the waviness out of it. Uh, there is a little bit, but not much. But uh, again, this is sort of the beauty of doing molded parts. Um, not much body work. Uh, I did have to do a little spot here. This is where my vacuum tube was plugged in and it usually makes a little indent uh, on the inside of the part. And in this case, it actually transferred to the outside. So I did have to fill that, no big deal. Um, so yeah, that's just about ready for primer. And I have the gaps pretty much zeroed out, but uh, primer and paint is gonna be a problem. So I will sand the gap back just slightly, you know, maybe a 32nd of an inch, uh, but again, that's fine for right now. I'll worry about that uh, when I get there. Um, the canopy, I have not started doing the feather edge on that yet, but I will real soon. So my goal is to get the fuselage all in primer and cowling's done. And then uh, I'll start on the canopy. I'm doing a cowl, I'm sorry, a, not a cowl, a spinner. So I 3D printed this mold and then sanded it smooth. That's primer in there and it's got a coat of resin on it. So that resin is tacking up. Okay, primer is on. As, as you can tell, I tinted it uh, with some blue toner. So uh, I thought I would make it look just a little nicer for display in Reno than ugly gray primer. So I think that turned out pretty nice. And uh, overall, I'm really happy with how everything went. It's nice and straight. Um, the black specks you see, that's called guide coat. So what I do is spray on that stuff. And what you do is you just kind of mist it all over the surface and then you sand until that guide coat is gone. And that's how you tell when you're wet sanding what you've sanded and what you haven't. So that's a, basically a standard procedure in a uh, auto body shop. So all looking good. I still have to do the elevator bottoms, get the other one laid up and bonded on. I have one done, but I haven't bonded it on there yet. So we're getting pretty close. Um, next, I think I'm gonna start sanding on that. And then I think I'm actually gonna make some graphics to put on the side of this to see Maybe if that'll make it look a little nicer. So uh, let's check that out. I went ahead and fit the cowl up just to kind of get an idea of what it's starting to look like. And I'm happy with that. The cowl fit is decent. It's nowhere near finished though, because uh, you know I've still got a clearance for paint. There's really no structure in the cowl. So I've only got a couple of screws in this lip here. And then I end up putting a couple more screws in the very front there with a little backer behind it to hold this together. So. Uh, that side fits real nice. This side is uh, not perfect, but I'm done with it for this. Again, I'm I'm taking it to Reno, and I'll put this side against the wall. <laughs> so whatever, I'm not I'm not worried about that. It the cowl fits fine, but I didn't have time to mess with the joggle to get it fixtured correctly. So it is what it is. It's good enough, and um, you know the whole thing is going to get up, gone over with a fine tooth comb at a later date anyway. So this is just to get it. Uh, you know, presentable to the public. Um, went ahead and did a little body work around the lip of the canopy there where it meets the glass. So that's all ready to go. I'm getting ready to put primer on that right now. Um, I've got to do a little bit more body work on the spinner and I'm gonna get primer on that. And then I'm basically done um, with what I'm gonna to do to the airplane before Reno with the exception of graphics. So um, let me get primer on that and uh, we'll come back and start looking at graphics. 
All right, primer is on. Brian's doing the unmasking there. So uh, we're gonna peel all that off. There's a few pinholes in it, but again, first primer, not terribly worried about it. It looks good. Get a shot down the side there. Good enough. So uh, we're getting ready to put decals on. So let me show you what I'm doing for decals. So Mirko at Aircraft Studio Design over in um, Italy is the one who did the paint scheme for this and it's outstanding. So obviously this is not the paint scheme. This is just, you know, getting it some other color than primer. Uh, so we've got the race number and um, as you guys know, I work at NASA. So he, 41 is my old radio controlled race number. That's the number I used all the time. And so he kind of took the NASA meatball and did the kind of the swirl thing around there sort of reminiscent. So I thought that was kind of a neat little touch. And uh, there is a another piece of the decal that has to go on afterwards. That it's like a gray shadow piece. That so this is sort of looking 3D. It's looking kind of raised up off the number. It goes over the top of that. So I'll put that on later. And then my name for the canopy rail, end number, and then of course the impulse logo there. Um, I'm debating whether or not to put an experimental sticker on it, but I don't know. We'll see. So uh, let's get these kind of taped up in place and figure out exactly where they're going to go and I'll show you what that looks like. So there's everything rough taped in place. Um, I still have a couple decisions to make. One, I think I want my name on the clear part of the canopy, but I'm not going to do that until the real paint job is on. So for now, I think it's going to go there. I'm happy with the race number there and number there. Now nothing's leveled out or anything. It's just taped up there to kind of look at it. What I'm not happy with yet is where the impulse is going. So in Mirko's awesome uh, rendering, this number is smaller. So I made it too big. And then the impulse is supposed to go, you know, basically right here. So that's not gonna work out. Uh, so I don't know if I'm gonna put it up there on the nose, maybe on the canopy. I'm not really sure yet. So I guess I'll just keep playing with it until I'm happy. So I got all the body work done on the spinner and um, turns out I had to destroy the mold to get this out. It stuck pretty good. I, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, I don't think the primer liked the plastic. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is non airworthy. It might not even be a plug. I'm probably gonna redo it, but uh, it's smooth enough to put primer on so it'll you know cover up the front of the plane and look nice, but this is a non airworthy part uh, for sure. So I'm gonna get some primer on that. And then, uh, man, we're getting really close to being done where I can uh, not be embarrassed of this thing in public. So let's do that. All right, so primer is on using my favorite trick, which is the paint roller. Um, I can't wait to actually do some real painting on this and make it look super nice. That's, that's sort of what I'm looking forward to. But so, the next thing I'm going to do is I just use these these tech screws here to hold things together temporarily. So I'm going to try to paint them so they're not so, you know, glaringly out of place there. And then we will mount the spinner and then she's just about done. All right, there it is. And that is as done as I'm going to get it. Um, truth be told, I'm a little burnt out. I've spent a lot of time on this thing, so I'm going to take a break. But got some decals on it. They look reasonable. Um, did not skin the bottoms of the elevators yet. I may do that before Reno if I get a second wind, but 
At this point, I don't think so. It, it looks good enough the way it is. So if you're going to be in Reno, man, come on, say, come on by and say hi. Um, it will be in the F1 hangar in the F1 organization booth where it's all the t-shirts and all that other stuff. And I will have t-shirts there for sale and I'll have hats. I'll have stickers and I'll also have the little balsa wood uh, flying models too. So I'd love it if you came by and said hi and take a close look. So that's it. I'm out and uh, I will post updates from Reno.